Hello, Chesapeake Bay Foundation students and teachers. We miss you all. So while we're not able to take you all outside to the Chesapeake Bay on our amazing outdoor education programs, uh, we are able to reach you at home through our awesome new Learn Outside, Learn at Home education series. This investigation is all about the state of your bay. Uh, so we're gonna be looking at our neighborhoods to try to figure out how they connect to the State of the Bay Report Card. Uh, we have two driving questions to help us do this. Um, our first one is to simply find out how our neighborhood is connected uh, and relates to the State of the Bay Report Card. More information on that coming soon. And the second is to find out how our neighborhoods, our communities, our yards um, can help save the Chesapeake Bay. Let's find out. So, the State of the Bay is a report that tracks our bay's health by examining habitat, pollution, and fisheries. It helps us determine where we're making progress and where we still have work to do. Let's start with habitats. Habitats are in every neighborhood. Your neighborhood is a habitat. It's where you live. Uh, so we're going to look through our neighborhoods and they all look different. Some of our neighborhoods are in cities, some are in the suburbs, some are in rural communities and out near farms, but every neighborhood has habitats. Let's get looking. Let's go out and explore to find existing habitats in our neighborhood. If we listen, we might just hear evidence of an osprey. Ospreys live in my neighborhood. You might have different animals living in yours. And all neighborhoods and habitats look different. Now I'm gonna kick it over to my friend, Claire Camardella, so that we can find habitats in her neighborhood and figure out where her rainwater goes. Thanks for getting us started, Megan. My name is Claire Camberdella. I'm the Baltimore Harbor Environmental Education Program Manager for Chesapeake Bay Foundation. And I'm currently in my backyard, which is right over the city line in Baltimore County. Out here in Baltimore, I'm pretty far away from the bay, but I know that what's going on on the land out here has a huge impact on the state of the bay. So I figured we could take a look around, look for habitats, and start to think about um, where the water goes when it rains out here because that water can take pollution with it to the bay in the form of polluted runoff. So we'll be thinking about those two parts of the state of the bay, pollution and habitats. So everybody, I'm going to go for a quick walk in my neighborhood and keep a lookout for different kinds of habitat and um, habitats that we're looking for. They could be for plants or for animals, and animals need food, shelter, water, they need to be able to find a mate. Um, so we could be thinking about different types of trees that different birds could live in, um, or I see lots of bats around my neighborhood at night too, so um, my neighbor has actually built a bat box, which is a pretty cool place for them to live out here in the suburbs. And then plants need, um, have different requirements for light and air and soil and water and all those things are controlled by the climate, um, but it could also be microclimate. So some plants like to grow in the shade where temperatures are a little cooler and there's a little bit more water, some like full sun. So we'll go out and see, um, look for some different habitats and then we can also be thinking about um, how these different habitats, how these different plants um, might impact the water when it rains, where the water goes, and whether the water is able to take any pollution with it. This little garden is full of plants that prefer lower levels of light and cooler temperatures and more water than some other plants. These are called May apples and they are native. There's a hydrangea which is also a native species but then these grasses and ferns are not native. This tree you will probably recognize as a flowering dogwood. This is a pink dogwood. The cool thing about flowering trees is that they also make berries. Once these flowers mature, they'll turn into little red berries. And those berries are also food for different kinds of birds, such as cardinals and bluebirds and even robins, which we usually see eating lots of worms. 
So this tree is not only great habitat for any bird who wants to make a nest in it, but also provides food. So if we look on the ground, we can find some acorns, which will be food for squirrels and even some birds. Something cool about looking for habitat in a suburban area is that you might find it in unexpected places. Okay, everybody, see if you can find the morning dove. Hopefully we don't scare her away. The next investigation on our list to find out how our neighborhoods are connected to the state of the bay is to find out where water goes when it rains in our neighborhoods. What do you think that water might carry with it? Behind me you can see a modified stream to handle the stormwater in my neighborhood. This flows directly into Fishing Creek and into the Chesapeake Bay. Where does your rainwater go? As I mentioned earlier, behind me is a stormwater management ditch that was designed to mimic and function like a stream. This allows rainwater to slow down, percolate into the groundwater, and provides wonderful food and habitat for the creatures that call my neighborhood home. One of the primary ways pollution enters our rivers and streams is through runoff. Runoff from agriculture and runoff from our neighborhoods and communities. The roads, sidewalks, our lawns, everything that falls on those surfaces after a rain rushes into our local rivers and streams. When I'm thinking about polluted runoff in my neighborhood, I'm thinking about nutrients, sediment, and toxics. So nutrients are made up of nitrogen and phosphorus, and those come from, in neighborhoods like this, primarily people um, using fertilizer on lawns that then can wash off when it rains. The sediment is just dirt, so just plain old dirt that washes off the land and can wash down into storm drains and then eventually make its way to the Chesapeake Bay. So nutrients can cause algae blooms which make the water cloudy and then that dead algae will eventually cause a low level of oxygen in the water. The sediment also makes the water cloudy and that prevents um, submerged aquatic vegetation from growing, which is also great habitat. So these are things that we're thinking about on the land that can impact the water quality uh, later on in, in the bay. So the last um, thing that I'm thinking about with polluted runoff are toxics. So these are things that we never want to be in the water. Um, so these could be pesticides or herbicides, again, that could wash off of uh, lawns. They also come from agriculture, but when we're thinking about our neighborhoods, these are sources of, of pesticides and herbicides and oil and gas that could be leaking out of people's cars. Also, as the tires and the brake pads wear down on our cars, there are heavy metals that are contained in those that can wash onto the streets and then down the storm drains and eventually make their way into our local rivers and streams and eventually into the Chesapeake Bay. So when I'm looking for ways that polluted runoff comes from my neighborhoods. I'm thinking not only about those sources, but also um, about ways that the water could be trapped and trap those pollutants and prevent them from getting to the bay, or ways that the water is easily running off and quickly running towards our rivers and streams. So we'll go take a look for some things like that. Rain can hit this rooftop and run into this gutter and make its way down the downspout. But here we have a rain barrel to trap all of that runoff.
So now that we've had a chance to look around for habitats and think about where water goes uh, when it rains, um, let's bring it back to thinking about the state of the bay in general. We said that we grade the bay on not only habitat and pollution, but also on fisheries. So why do our storm drains tell us about our connection to the bay and tell us don't dump? Because if pollution makes it into the water, it can impact how aquatic ecosystems function and negatively impact some of those species that we ha uh, as humans have come to know and to love, even if it's just for eating them. Um, but we also rely on these species for food, for jobs, and as a vital part of our economy.